Hey y'all, sitting here working on tackle, resting my bad leg, and thinking about this plug that a lot of people talk about, and if you don't know about, you need to know about, it's a wiggle wart, the old storm wiggle wart. We're going to talk about this because there's a lot of misconceptions on this bait. It's a really good bait. We'll be right back. We're going to talk about the storm wiggle wart. Well, something like that. Be right back. So here's the deal. <clears throat> if you've never thrown a wiggle wart, here in the Ozarks, it's legend. Any highland lake with rocks, bluff, riprap, and such. Well, same, of course, that means there's a lot of lowland lakes that have riprap too. It's a tremendous bait, especially in cold water. But don't let that fool you. Catch them anytime you want to throw a wiggle wart. I've caught them in, in the summertime. Matter of fact, huge misconception about the. Uh, cold water thing this bait right here this baby bass it was one summer when I was guiding this was the bait in July and August on Truman Lake uh, it's really good bait I don't know what was making it work so well but here's the talk about wiggle warts that blow people away storm manufacturing out of Oklahoma made these things like and the chug bug uh, thin fin hot and tight all them kind of baits for years but sometime around 1999, Normark Rapala bought out Wiggle Warts, bought out Storm. And the baits went south. Now, I don't believe that's really true if they don't catch fish. I have a few newer ones. I, what I was going through tack, I pulled this box that's got a bunch of different baits in it. And I realized how many of the old ones are in here, old Wiggle Warts, and how many of the new Wiggle Warts I had. I didn't know I had so many. You can tell them once you learn how to identify them, there's a new one. It'll catch fish. A lot of misconceptions. And the thing is, some of these baits, like that bait right there, bring as much as 40 60 bucks a piece, maybe even $100. Crazy. I own over 100 of the Wiggle Warts everybody wants. No, they're not for sale. I'm never going to get rid of them. Well, maybe I ought to, $40 a piece, I ought to get rid of all of them and buy something cool. The true story behind the wiggle wart and why the ones that are so much in demand are really cool baits and why people goof up on which ones are demand and which ones shouldn't be goes like this, as far as I know, and I think I'm pretty much right. Jim Morton was our head sales manager at one time. We talked quite a bit about this. Um, those old wiggle warts. They started making them like the 60s or 70s. I guess the 70s, not 60s. I started throwing them in the early 80s. And I have a bunch of those baits from the early 80s to the late 80s, mid-90s that are just wiggle warts. They're fish-catching freaks, but they are not the high-dollar ones people want. Because here's what happened. You produce a lot of baits out of a mold, and the molds change. Bass boats change. And Storm did not refurbish their molds. They started getting a little bit rough. The way they come, I think they make heat probably. They start coming out of those molds a little bit rough. What that did for the wiggle wart specifically though, was it started running erratic. It hunted. So these things got big old wide wick. They, they, they swivel almost from the line tie. They do this. Crazy. What the one started doing that the molds were getting bad on was they would go to the side and they'd go to the side. They would not track straight. You can tell you got one of the right ears. You throw it out and try to burn it back, it runs up on the side. It will not burn back. That's how you know you got the good ones. Good ones being that they do something different. They all catch fish. I'm never going to believe they don't. So when Normark bought out Storm around 99, somewhere in there, they... they Retooled the molds. Actually, I understand they sent to production overseas, China. So they come out with a, a, a bait that was back to blueprinted perfect, or better, better, close to perfect. They also 
put crazy pretty finishes on them and they weren't the same colors. Probably not as quality of hooks and, and split rings and stuff, but still, they catch fish. Come on, guys. But they didn't hunt. They didn't do this and it bounced off. And that hunting thing at slow speeds, which is where this bait shines, caught them in the middle of summer, but where it shines in that 40 degree water, that hunting and the slow retrieve, that's what people look for. It's good enough. I believe it is definitely a, I know it's a fish catching freak, but is it worth 40 or 50 or $100 a piece? The problem is people are paying that for baits that are pre Rapala. But they're too much pre repel Those 70s and 80s wiggle warts, they're not special. It would be the ones in the mid to late 90s, those last four or five years, to really be the ones that hunt. I've got piles of them, and you know what? I have fish with them. Can you all see the finish on that bait? It was chrome at one time. Look at that. I've also repainted a bunch of them over the years. Look at that poor thing. It's destroyed. Isn't that great? So obviously I've caught a lot of fish on them. Um, I probably have a hundred of the pre-Rapala, and that, I'm not bragging. I just I got bunches of them. The pre-Rapala, but in those right years, it was a real narrow window when they really got to where they hunted. If you're not sure, you chunk it out, put a burn on it, and if it runs off the side and loops around, that's one of the good ones. They won't run straight at any speed. I hardly ever throw those old baits because, for one thing, if they are worth that kind of money, I hate to lose them. And I don't see anybody paying me. The, look at this collection of baits. This just reached in this one box, and there's five or six or eight of these. These things are beat to pieces. There's nothing left of them. Um, why would I ever want to sell those to anybody? I mean, they're just wonderful. And... Uh, Boy, some of them old crawdad colors. I forgot what they call this. Uh, they come out with it right before they sold the Rapala. Uh, Ghost Green. Oh, my gosh. So I got a bunch of them. I got some that are basically brand new. But here's the deal. I started making my own wiggle warts a few years ago for fun out of the Predator blanks. Now, Predator is not the same bait. It's a little bit smaller bait, but it does hunt fairly well. Catch a lot of fish on them, and I kind of like that slightly smaller profile sometimes. I don't know if y'all can see. It is just barely a skinnier, smaller profile bait. But anyway, you buy those for like two and a quarter, paint them yourself, so you got less than five bucks easy in one. Um, and they do hunt. And of course, you get to make them pretty yourself, so whatever. Um... A lot of hype, a lot of hyperbole. That's a pretty narrow window. Four or five years tops. If those baits, that mold was getting bad enough, those baits come out a little weird. And they run great. That's a different kind of thing. The hunting at slow speeds. Where it's going like this and it just it can't stay on a true track. That seems to be the key. I believe in it. I don't die by it, but most, I've got a bunch of 70s and 80s wiggle warts that are nothing special, except I think they're made better than the 90s models. I'm pretty sure they're a better built bait. So that's kind of the story. I'm sticking to it. I thought I'd share that with y'all, because you hear all this crap, and people right here local, right here in Missouri, where the wiggle wart is king, uh, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, that's by golly, um, they're buying these baits, paying stupid money for baits that aren't anything special. I'm not going to sell mine. I'm going to keep them. They're not costing me nothing. I don't have to feed them very much. These here, I haven't thrown. These are in a box. It's not even a tackle box that I use. There's there's 20 or 30 right here. They're the right years. Uh, I put new hooks on some of them a few years ago, but I haven't thrown them. I keep a few in my wiggle board box all the time, though. Who knows? Maybe I'll need them. They're special enough but not $40, $1,600 special, I don't think. People are going to keep buying them. They're going to keep paying too much for them. I'm not going to. Um, I thought I'd share that with y'all. If you haven't thrown a wiggle wart and you're on a highland lake or a lake with any rock, 
So I can see some of the southern flatland reservoirs with riprap in the spring and winter. Come on, y'all. Fish or fish. They're going to bite these things. So if you haven't ever thrown a wiggle wart, get a couple. And they'll have to, most of them, 90% of the wiggle warts are going to be crawdad color. They work great in the shad and a baby bass. Oh, yeah. That was the real deal back in the day. Matter of fact, those gold ones, I only had a few ever in dirty water. Oh, my. And, yeah, they're ugly. If you look at them, the seams on them are bad. The lips bad. Now, I, I read once about how to have printed something. No, they don't. They didn't have anything printed. That was a weird deal. You, you can just see the glue. It's just they're ugly the way they went together because that, the molds were wore out. Storm couldn't afford or didn't want to fix them. Normark, Rapala bought them out, and apparently nobody likes them after that. I've got some I've caught fish on. I like my old ones, too. I don't live or die by them, and I make my own out of the Predator Blanks and the Rock Collars, too, and they catch a lot of fish, and that's all I got. And you all take it out to the bank. You, you might have to if you're going to buy very many of these old wiggle warts at $40 to $100 a piece. God bless you all. Talk to you later.